Welcome to lesson one, calculate the cost of a loan. In our previous lessons, we began to look at ownership as compared to rent. And in order to own property, you have to have money to pay for it. You have to purchase it, just like when you purchase a car. Um, the problem is, is that homes are very expensive. So are condominiums and townhomes. It's all very expensive, and most people don't have that much cash lying around that they can just purchase a home outright. So they have to get a loan. So today we're going to look at how to calculate your loan payment. We're going to look and understand what APR is. And we're also going to determine how much interest you will actually pay over the life of your loan. And those are our objectives. So let's look at our first objective, APR. What is APR? APR is the annual percentage rate. The better credit you have, the lower annual percentage rate that the bank can offer you. Also, it depends on the life of your loan. Most people take out a 30-year mortgage when they purchase a home or a condominium, but some people can afford to make a higher payment and take out a 10-year loan or a 15-year loan. And typically, the shorter your loan, the lower your percentage rate. So the APR is the interest charge you must pay for borrowing that principal amount of money. So banks won't just give you that money and tell you to pay it back over time. They want to earn money themselves. So that's what the APR is. It's an interest charge. So obviously the lower interest charge you can secure, the better. Interest then is recalculated each month based on your outstanding balance. So each month you're going to make a little bit of a payment and that will pay some of your principal down, but then it'll also be composed of interest. And so each month, because your principal has changed, they'll do a recalculation. Many times people take out a fixed rate mortgage because they want the security of knowing that their interest rate will stay the same. The fixed rate mortgage, in that situation, your monthly payment and your interest rate, like I said, remain the same over the life of the loan. However, the one thing you have to think about, though, is that even though your payment remains the same each month, the amount that you pay to principal will increase over time while the amount that you pay for the interest decreases. And I'm going to show you an amortization schedule so that will make a little bit more sense to you. So on this next slide, let's focus on this second schedule down here, this amortization schedule. In this case, this is just a quick snapshot. Somebody borrowed $200,000. And their monthly payment, if you'll notice here, for the first six years and forever, for however long they borrowed it, is the same, $1,297.20. It never changes. So each month they know how much they have to pay. But then if you look at the next two columns, you will see that interest during that first month was $1,125 and principal was $172. But in the next month, notice that the interest went down by almost a dollar and the principal amount paid off went up by almost a dollar. And if you'll notice this trend, as we go through these months, the principal amount paid off each month increases, while the interest that is paid each month decreases. And that's an amortization schedule. And then we can see the, the balance is reduced by however much principal you pay off each month. So here's where it gets a little more complicated, or it looks more complicated anyway. This is our monthly payment formula. And this is widely used, and there are many programs that have it programmed in there automatically. Um, as mortgage calculators, you can go in, you can put what you want to borrow, you can put your interest rate, and you can put in the time period that you want to borrow the money for, and it will calculate it for you. But there is some value to having you be able to calculate it for yourself. Um, you can also build your own amortization schedule, and a good program for doing this is Excel. But it just helps you to budget and make plans for your future if you can do this. So let's look at our monthly payment formula. So over here, this is a very complicated looking formula, but in reality, you can write this down in your notes and you can refer to it. And we're, there's only three variables here. So M is our monthly payment. Often that's what we're trying to find. What is our monthly payment? P is the principal amount that we are borrowing. So in this case down below here, this person borrowed $200,000. R is our interest rate. And it makes sense to have R over 12 because we want to find out the interest rate each month because we are recalculating it each month. 
and then we multiply again by an interest rate over 12 plus 100% of what we had before. That's what the one would represent. And then this T up here is the number of years. So 12 is how many months in a year, and T is the number of years of your loan. So if you take out a 30-year loan times 12 years, you're going to have 360 payments. So in effect, this is being raised to the power of how many payments you're going to make over the life of your loan. And then it's simply just divided by very similar information. So 100% of what you have times your interest rate per month. Again, raised to the power of the number of payments minus one. So we are going to actually practice using this monthly payment formula. And I would say that really it's, it's not that difficult when you start plugging in values. The thing that becomes hard is putting it in your calculator correctly. So let's look at how to do that. Okay, so here we have a sample problem. You want to buy a home and you need to borrow $190,000 from a bank and you want to have your loan be over a 30-year period, which again is very typical. And the interest rate they are offering you on this is 6.4%. Okay, so that's your interest rate. Um, typically when you buy a home, say the home is on the market for $200,000, you will have to put down about 5% in order to purchase the home. So in this case, this is the amount that you are borrowing that may not necessarily be the price of the home or the condo or the townhome that you are purchasing. So our two questions are what will be our monthly payment and what, how much interest will we pay over 30 years if we make our payments as scheduled. So in order to do this, all we need to do is simply fill in the equation with the numbers that are given. So in order to find our monthly payment, we need P, our principal, which is 190,000, times our interest rate. Now the key is, is we can't write the interest rate as 6.4. We have to write it always in the decimal form. So if we move the decimal two spaces to the left, we divide by 100, we get 0.064. So we would have 0.064 divided by 12, and then we would multiply that by 1 plus 0.064 divided by 12 again, raised to a power of 12 times, we said 30 years, so we would have a 30 right here. Okay, and that's our numerator. Seems like a lot of numbers, but again, it, it's actually very simple if we have the formula in front of us. So for our denominator, we just have 1 plus 0.064, again, divided by 12. You can see a theme here. We're always wanting the interest rate per month. Raised to the 12 times 30 years minus 1. So that's our first step. That wasn't too bad. All we did was fill in the variables. Now we need to do this in our calculator. So that's where it's a little bit tricky. You know, one thing people can do is they can do it in pieces. They can simplify what's in parentheses and simplify this parentheses and then rewrite it. Um, they can multiply these. You just have to be careful to have your order of operations correct. Okay, so what I've done is I've moved over our equation to a blank screen so we can have lots of room to sort this out. So here we have our calculator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show it to you in pieces just because it seems like more people make mistakes when they try to put this whole thing in the calculator at the same time. You need a lot of parentheses to do that. You need parentheses around your entire numerator and parentheses around your entire denominator, as well as all the individual parentheses. And that is often very difficult for people. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simplify the what's in parentheses first. So I'm going to take 0.064 divided by 12, and this is used throughout. So once I have this number, then it's easy for me to use it again and again. So it's 0 0.0053, it looks like. 0 0.0053. And notice that I'm not rounding too much um, because I want to preserve as much of this as possible, these place values out this way to the right, just so that my number is more accurate. So now I know that 0 0.064 divided by 12 is going to be 0 0.0053. 
and I just need to add 1 to it. So again, always do the fraction first, and then do plus 1. So that would be 1.0053. And I can do 12 times 30 in my head, so that's raised to the 360 power. And already my numerator is looking much, much better, much simpler once I've gotten rid of all the fractions. Again, I can do that for the bottom. This set of parentheses is the same as that, so that's going to be 1.0053 as well. And again, raised to the 360 power, and then at the end, minus 1. So I only did one calculation, and I simplified my equation quite a bit. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my exponent, because exponents come next before multiplication. So I don't want to multiply all three of these together. I want to raise 1.0053 to the 360 power. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take, clear this, 1.0053, and then I'm going to raise it, so that's y to the x on this, raise it to the 360 power, and that will give me 6.706. Okay, so when I get there, 6.0, I'll look it back up. So I can write all this, and now I know that this part right in here is going to be 6.706. .06. And the nice thing about that is I have the exact same calculation down here, so we already know that that is 6.076 .06 minus 1. Okay, I'm almost done. Now I can do the entire numerator on my calculator, and I can multiply that out. So I already have the 6.706 .06 up, so I'm just going to multiply that now by 0 .0053, and multiply that by 190,000, my principal, and that will give us 6752.66. So 67. 52.66, and then that's going to be divided by 5.706, right? 6.7 minus 1 would bring us down to 5. And then for my final answer, I just need to divide. So I already have the 6 on my calculator, the 6752. So I'm just going to divide that by 5.706. And this will give me my monthly payment of eleven eighty three and forty three cents. Eleven eighty three point forty three. And it's not perfect because I did round throughout here, but it's going to be very close. So I know that that is very close to what I'm going to have to pay if I want to take out a loan of one hundred and ninety thousand over thirty years. Okay. So that wasn't the only question that was asked of us. Um, let's go back to our questions. So our first question was, what will be your monthly payments? And that will be the 1183.43, which we just calculated. But then the second question says, what will be your total interest for the 30 years? Well, let's think about this. This is the amount that I'm going to pay. It's not going to change. And I'm going to pay this every single month for 30 years. So I am going to be paying 11 83, 43, 30 years, but I'm not going to be making one payment a year, I'm going to be making 12 payments each year. So if you remember in the formula, we had it raised to the 12 times t power, and we had 360 payments. If we go back and we look at our original equation, we have 12 times t, that's what we're raising it to right here, 12 months times 30 years. That's the number of payments we are actually going to be making over the 30 years. So we're going to make 360 payments. So let's just see how much are we going to have to pay in payments over the course of 30 years. So we have 360 times our 11, 83, and 43 cents. We're going to pay $426,034.80. So 
84 and 80 cents. That was 80 cents. So here we go. Based on this number and knowing that we only borrowed 190,000, can we determine how much of this 426,000 was due to interest? Well, all we have to do is subtract the 190,000, that's our principal amount, from this 426, and we get how much we had to pay in interest. So if we just go ahead and do a little subtraction here. We had to pay almost a quarter of a million dollars in interest, $236,000 and a little bit more in interest is what we paid over the life of the loan. Seems crazy, but that's the only way people can afford many times to own a home. The way you can reduce this is to pay more than what's required, this $1,183 each month. If you pay more than that, anything you pay above and beyond that is going to go directly to principal. So that's one way to speed up your payments or to speed up your paying off your loan is to increase how much you pay each month. The interest will stay the same, but if you pay more, it goes to principal. Another thing is to find a loan where you can get a lower interest rate. You know, right now, interest rates are around 4%. They've been going up a little bit. Um, there's been times in history where it's been up 8 and 9%. You know, that's, that's extremely high. And finally, um, be careful of your credit. You know, don't take out too many credit cards. Um, be careful that if you borrow money or you, you've had a loan for a car that you always pay it back on time every month. So having a good credit, paying more each month, can decrease the amount you end up paying in the end. Okay, that concludes our lesson right now on calculating the cost of a loan. Um, so hopefully at this point now you understand how APR, annual percentage rate, is calculated. You are now able to use that monthly payment formula. You've seen it modeled once to find your total monthly payments. And bear in mind, you can use that to find your monthly payments on a car loan too over five years. Um, and then you can also, in the end, determine the total interest that you will pay over the life of the loan, which is good and important because it can give you ideas on, hey, that's a lot of interest. Perhaps instead of only paying the 1183, I'm going to bump that up and just pay 1500 every month because I can afford to. And that will decrease how much interest I have to pay as well as decrease how long I'll have the loan for.